Welcome back everybody. We're going to start today with a Bible reading read for us by Amber alongside some pictures that she's taken for us. The Bible says in Psalm 104 verses 10 to 20 and 33 and 34. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and the herb for the surface of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil that maketh his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted, Will the birds make their nests? As for the stork, the fir trees are their house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. He appointeth the moon for the seasons, the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, whereon all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet, and I shall be glad in the Lord. So this is week five, our final week of looking at the life of George Muller. And I hope that you can see now that George was a man who trusted God completely to meet his needs. And I hope that if you're a Christian boy or girl, that you know you can trust God to be with you and to answer your prayers as well. You know, God doesn't change. He will never let you down. I wanted you to see that very clearly. So I asked my friend Isabel if she would speak to you about how God has worked in her life and how God has answered prayer. Hello, boys and girls. I've been listening to the stories that Claire has been telling about George Boer and I've really enjoyed them. Isn't it amazing how God answers prayer and how he knows the needs that George and Mary had? You know, I wonder, do you think God still knows the needs that we have? And do you think that he still answers prayer? Well, there's a verse of the Bible. In fact, Claire read it to us one other week. And it says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. So yes, he still does know the needs that we have and he still does answer prayer. And I'm going to prove that to you because I've got some stories to tell you. Now our story begins 20 years ago when God spoke to us through the Bible and through just speaking into our hearts when we prayed and told us that we were to start a charity called Helping Others Worldwide. And that's what it does. It, in, the, in the charity we gather up things and we send them out to countries where they don't have the things that we have to help the people out there. Now it might be things like soap and toothpaste and toothbrushes and exercise books and desks and chairs for the school and pencils and pens, maybe even hospital beds. Once we even send out enough to uh, cover a church or the roof of a church. And once we send out a tractor and God provided it all. But the first story that I want to tell you is about a little girl called Susie. But it all begins with a lady and she had a beautiful quilt cover. She had taken it off her, her daughter's bed because her daughter really was too old for it now because it was a really cute quilt cover. There were bears on it. It was called Forever Friends. But she, she thought, this is really cute, but it's no good to us anymore. So I'm going to bring it to Ernest and Isabel and they can send it out to Africa. So that's what happened. She put it in a bag and it went into our shed and there it sat and waited. And then eventually one day I went out with my helpers and we decided we would pack it in a barrel for the missionaries. So there it went into a barrel labelled for the missionaries and there it sat and waited. Eventually the big day came and the lorry came in and the container went onto the lorry with the barrel inside with the quilt inside the barrel. And there it waited. Eventually it got to a country in Africa called the Gambia. 
and the missionary sorted out everything in the barrel, but the quilt wasn't needed just at that time. No one needed it, so there it sat and waited. But what has this all got to do with Susie? Well, Susie's mum and dad were missionaries in the Gambia, but they had been working really hard telling everybody about Jesus, and they were really tired and homesick. So they went home for a while to England to see their family and to have a rest. And you know, Susie loved it in England. She loved being with her granny and her grandpa, and she loved being with her cousins and her aunties and uncles. And when the time came that their holiday was over and they were going back to Gambia, she didn't want to go. And she cried and she cried. And she said, I don't want to go to Africa. I want to stay here. I like it here. I like my bedroom and I like my family and I want to stay here. So she cried and that made her mum and dad very unhappy. But meantime, Joanne, the missionary out in the Gambia, was getting everything ready for them coming. She had aired the house and she had just the beds to back. So she thought, oh, I think there was a quilt in that barrel that came from Northern Ireland. So she got into the barrel and had a good poke and she found the quilt cover. She said, yes, that'll be nice. They'll like that and she put it on the bed. When Susie got to the Gambia and she ran into the bedroom, there was the bed and there was the Forever Friends quilt cover on the bed. And guess what? It was exactly the same quilt cover as she had on her bed in England. Exactly the same picture, Forever Friends. And she said, oh, my bed's in Africa. And that made her happy and that made her family very happy too because she said, my bed's in Africa. So God knew what Susie needed and he knew when she needed it. That's why it waited all that time to the right time when Susie needed it. Isn't God good? Another story I have is about something really big that went out to Africa, and that was a sports hall. You might wonder why a sports hall would go out to Africa. Well, it was going out to a school, and the school was for missionary children. And the missionary children really wanted to have a sports hall at their school so they could do PE and games. So the project was started. And what was planned was the sports hall would all go into the container in pieces on all the boats to join it together. And then it would all go out to Senegal. And when it got there, a team from Northern Ireland would go out and put it all together for the school. But this was a big, big project. And one day Ernest was feeling a bit scared and he thought this is too big a project. It's too hard and it's too much money. And he prayed really hard and he said, Lord, if you want this to go ahead, I want you to send us a thousand pounds in the post tomorrow. A thousand pounds, a lot of money. But then he thought, oh dear, it's four o'clock. The post has already been collected today. So it's too late for God to speak to anyone to ask them to put a thousand pounds in the post. But then he thought, no, God knows all about this right from the start. So it still stands, Lord, if you want us to go ahead, please send us a thousand pounds. Well, the next morning when the postman came, can you guess what happened? There was a check. How much do you think it was for? A thousand pounds? No, it was for... £1,200. God gave it all and more. God is so good. But you know that project was so big and after a while all the money was used up. There was nothing more in the bank and we still needed a bit more. So we're feeling really discouraged. In fact I had cried a wee bit and we were just praying Lord please we need more money. All the people who normally give us money have given us. We don't know where we're going to get it. And the doorbell rang. And we went to the door there was a lady standing on the door and she said, I've been trying to sell a piece of land for quite a while and it has taken ages, but it all came through today and I want to give you this gift. When we opened it up, what do you think it was? A cheque for £5,000. And that was just amazing. That whole project cost £30,000 and God provided it all because God answers prayer. The last story is just about a coat. We had a letter from a missionary asking for three coats for three pastors, waterproof coats for the rainy season in Africa. 
so I went into town to try and get coats. I was only able to get two. The container was gone the next day. So we worked really hard till bedtime out in the shed. And then we came in and went to bed. And all night I kept praying, Lord, I really wanted to send three coats. And I've only got two. And I really feel as though we should be sending three. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll get up and I'll get one of Ernest's coats. But I took it out of the wardrobe and then I realised it was no good because he was tall and these African pastors are all very short. So I thought, well, it's just going to have to be two coats. But I just kept praying about it and praying about it. And the next morning, really early, when we went into the shed, what do you think was there? A brand new man's coat on top of all the other things just sitting there. A man's coat, waterproof, small coat. So I don't know where it came from. We thought we were the last ones in the shed and the first ones out the next morning. But God sent that coat because God answered prayer because he knew the need and he knew when it was needed. I'm going to read you another verse. And it's found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So that means he's the same. He knows the need. And he can answer prayer. Same as he did for George Muller. Same as he does today. And same as he will in the future. He knows it all. What is it that Claire says you sing? Our God is a great big God. Do you know, George Muller kept journals like a diary. And in them he wrote down every penny and every pound that anybody gave to him or any time that prayer was answered. And if you were to read through his, his journals, it's just answer to prayer after answer to prayer. A lot of these prayers were for the orphans and for their food. One Saturday, none of the three homes had money or bread. What would they give the children for breakfast? A man visited George and gave him half a sovereign, just in time to go to the shop and buy bread before it closed for the night. Another morning, all the plates and cups and bowls on the table were empty. There was no food in the larder and no money to buy the food. The children were standing, waiting on their breakfast. And George said, children, you know we must be in time for school. Then he lifted up his hands and prayed, dear father, we thank thee for what thou are going to give us to eat. There was a knock at the door. The baker stood there and said, Mr Muller, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have bread for breakfast and the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at 2am and baked some fresh bread and I've brought it. George thanked the baker and no sooner had he left than there was a second knock at the door. It was the milkman. He announced that his milk cart had broken down right in front of the orphanage and he would like to give the children his cans of fresh milk so he could empty his wagon and repair it. By now George had 100 orphans. What a responsibility! Yet George never doubted God because he knew that God would never let him down or fail him. If God has called you to be a missionary he would never let you down either. You might not always have things your way, but God will take care of you. We've looked in Sunday school before at the traffic lights and how sometimes God says yes and prayer is answered straight away and how we expect. And sometimes God says no and our prayers aren't answered in the way that we think because God has a different plan, a better plan. And sometimes God says wait. And we have to trust in God's time. A very poor lady visited George and she talked to him about the work that he did. And George told her all about the orphanage and he also admitted that sometimes there were money problems. Even though there were money problems, he told her that God always supplied what they needed. Because the lady looked so poor, George offered to look after her as well. She was shocked and George was even more shocked when the lady told him she wasn't poor and she wasn't there to take anything from him. 
She was there to give him money. George told her to go home and to pray about it and only give the money if she felt that God wanted her to. George knew that at the end of the month he had a very big bill to pay and in his mind he was thinking that if this lady gave the money he would have no problem paying the bill at all. The lady didn't give the money but God supplied everything that George needed from other people to pay the bill. Can you see that this prayer wasn't answered in the way that George expected? Three months later, the lady visited George again, and this time she put £500 into George's bank account. Another house had become available to rent on the same street as the orphanage, and George wanted to have it so that he could open another orphanage. So what do you think he did? Well, first of all, he talked to God. George's prayers were soon answered when he was presented with Colin, a 10-year-old orphan who was always getting into trouble. This time, Colin and six of his friends had slid down the banisters and broken them. George wanted to speak to Colin and see why he made such bad choices. Little Colin admitted that he was lonely. His cousin was still in the poorhouse. George continued his questions. As he spoke, George realised that there were hundreds of other Collins among the streets of Bristol. Boys and girls who not only needed food and shelter and a place to stay, but who also needed to hear of God's love. Every day, George had to refuse applications to the orphanage because there simply wasn't room. Now God was providing the resources and another home right on Wilson Street. God's direction was clear. He waited for four weeks just to make sure that God really wanted him to do this. Then he went to see about this other house. George was very surprised when the people said that they decided not to move because they couldn't find another house that they really liked. George was so sure that he should have the house that he even prayed that God would help these people find somewhere that they would like to move. He went back in one week's time and guess what? They had found a new house. The house was available again for the orphanage. Boys and girls, what is it we can say about our God? Our God is a great big God. If you trust God and obey him, then you just don't know where he might take you or what he will allow you to do for him. On the 30th of October 1845, George received a letter from a gentleman who lived on the street where the four orphan houses were. George wrote in his journal that the letter was polite and friendly, but that the man and the rest of the neighbours were tired of the noise coming from the orphanage and they believed that it should be closed down or moved. George understood this complaint because there was a lot of noise from the homes. However, George also knew that this man couldn't close the orphanages because God had opened them and he would keep them open. One day when George was out walking with his daughter Lydia, he asked her where she might like to live. She said in wide open spaces with plenty of breezes where you could smell the sea. George said it was impossible to rent anywhere like that. Lydia turned to him and said, No, but you could build an orphanage there. Of course, what did George do? He prayed about it. And the more that he prayed, the more certain he was that this is what God wanted him to do. So he told God what he would need. He would need seven acres of ground in Bristol. And he would need an architect. And he would need... £10,000. Now £10,000 is a lot of money today but back when George needed it it would be like us having to find one and a half million pounds. George prayed for 36 days and he hadn't received any money. Christian boy or girl maybe you have a parent or a grandparent or a brother or sister or an auntie or uncle someone that you love who hasn't put their faith in Jesus, they're not saved, and you've been praying for them, and you think that nothing's happened, don't 
be discouraged. God hears your prayer, so keep on praying. Never give up. After the 36 days, George was given a gift of £1,000. He knew that that was a sign from God that he should go ahead. The next amazing thing that happened was an architect who was a Christian man offered to work for George with no pay. Then the really exciting news. On the 2nd of February 1846, he was told about seven acres of land for sale in a place called Ashley Down in Bristol. George went to see it. It was a wide open space. There were no neighbours. There was lovely breezes and you could actually smell the sea air. It was just like his daughter Lydia had described. George knew that this was the perfect place for the orphanage. George went that very same day to talk to the landowner, but he wasn't at home and he wasn't in his office. George had missed him somehow and he could have kept on looking or he could have waited on him, but he felt that God was speaking to him. And a verse came to him, you can read it in James chapter 1 and verse 4 and it says, But let patience have her perfect work. George felt that God wanted him to wait until the next day, so he waited. And the next morning, George went to the landowner's office and he was there, but he was in bad mood. And he told George that he had slept really badly the night before. He'd woken up at three o'clock and he hadn't been able to get back to sleep until five o'clock. And he said that during that time, he kept hearing a voice in his head telling him to sell his land for less money. So George was able to buy the land for much less than he thought he would be able to. The building went ahead and yes, God provided the money for it. On the 5th of July, 1847, George and Mary stood on top of Ashley Down and watched 300 orphans walk towards their new home. In December, 1850, George decided to extend the orphanage because he wanted to be able to have 700 children. But George discovered that the land could not be purchased for the orphanage. George was so angry, but of course, God knew much better than George. When George began looking carefully at the land he already had, he saw that he could use it to expand the orphanage. He did not need to buy more land. Boys and girls, it is so important that you realise that God always knows best. And the best thing that you can do is always obey God. George always obeyed God and instead of buying more land, he was able to build at the sides of the building that was already there. And this cost him much less money. George had received £46,000 to do this work. And that was £11,000 more than it cost. Can you see how God again had provided George with what he needed and more? George now had a thousand orphans ranging in age from about a few weeks old to 17 years old. And he had appointed an assistant to help him. His name was Jim Wright. In 1856, George decided that they needed to build again. This time he would need more land. He was told that he'd never get the land that he wanted because the government wanted to buy it for their own use. Do you think that put George off? No, of course not. He really believed the words that you'll find in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26 where it says, With God all things are possible. Surely, boys and girls, as you've listened every week about the story of George Muller and as you listened to Isabel this morning, you can see that God really can do anything. There's no limits with God. There's nothing too small and there's nothing too big. You have to put your trust in Jesus and be prepared to live for him. George knew that God was with him, so he went to the government to see what he could do to get the bit of land that he wanted and it turned out that they only wanted to buy a small part of the land the rest was available for George to purchase 
Remember, boys and girls, there really is nothing too hard for God. George went to talk to the landowner who told him that he could sell him the land and it would cost £5,700. It took four years to build the two new homes. They were completed on the 6th of January 1870. George now had 2,050 orphan children to care for. Sadly, boys and girls, a month after the houses were finished, George's wife, Mary, died. George was now 65 years old. Several years later, George's daughter, Lydia, married his assistant, Jim Wright. Jim and Lydia took over the running of the orphanages and George married again. His new wife was called Susanna Grace Sanger. Even though George was ready to hand over the ministry of the orphanage to his daughter, it didn't mean that he was ready to stop serving the Lord. He and Susanna went on a series of missionary trips to Europe, Asia and America. They travelled over 200,000 miles and preached in 42 countries to 3 million people until he was 88. George Miller's life and ministry were far-reaching. He allowed God to do so many things through him. Yes, boys and girls, we really do have a great big God. A God who hasn't changed and a God who is just the same today as he was when George Miller was alive. A God who can really take your life and use it if you're prepared to obey him in the same way that George did. Then maybe someday someone will be telling boys and girls the story about your life and how you gave it to God and he used you to reach loads of people for him. George died at Ashley Down at the age of 93 and he's been called many things. He's been called a robber of the cruel streets. He's been called a man of courage, faith. He's been called a hard worker, someone who never gave up and a man of prayer. George was a man who lived his life encouraging Christians, wanting them to know that they served a living God, a God who heard them and who answered prayer. If you're a Christian, can I encourage you to spend time with God, spend time in your Bible and spend time talking to God in prayer and be ready to hear and to obey. And if you're not a Christian, if you're someone who's listened to all five weeks, knowing that you, are, you don't have the right relationship with God, you've never come and asked to be forgiven, can I ask that maybe today, this would be the day that you do it. Can I read you a verse from 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9? It says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus came into the world to die for sinners. He came into the world to die for you. So you need to go to God and ask to be forgiven. Can you imagine what it was like in heaven when George Muller entered it. It would have been fantastic. But well, boys and girls, are you ready for heaven? If you're not ready for heaven, why not get ready today and start trusting in the Lord Jesus? So we'll finish off today with a quick word of prayer. Close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we praise you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his life and for his death. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help the boys and girls this week to see what it is that Jesus has done for them. We pray that as they think on the life of George Muller, that the boys and girls who have already put their trust in you will see their need that they have to obey, that they would live their whole lives your way. Pray that you'll be with them this week. We pray for any that are not well at the minute, Lord, that you'll just give them strength and health again. Pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.